This is video number one for the Toyota Supra. This vehicle is unlike any vehicle that we've had with Toyota before. So we've created our own technical series here at the Portland Regional Training Center. This video will address pad mode, ISTA, and starting a case. So before we get started, what do we need to know? First of all, this is a BMW-based diagnostic interface known as ISTA. ISTA is a very large file. It is located on TIS and it is about 10 gigabytes in size. So it's important to give yourself some time to download it before usage. Also, you must have a power supply on the vehicle when in diagnostic mode, also known as pad mode. You must also use the DCA 8000 for the power supply needs. Supra can use as much as 60 plus amps in pad mode. No other charger or power supply of, that we've had in the past can do, supply this much amperage. So the DCA 8000 is a must. Then you must use the dedicated ISTA cable to communicate with the vehicle. Before we get into pad mode and into using ISTA, let's first take a look at the differences between ISTA and Textring. First of all, Textring uses CAN to communicate with the vehicle. This controller area network is what Toyota has used for a lot of years to communicate with our vehicles. With Supra and ISTA, it uses an Ethernet to communicate with the vehicle. What that means to you is that there is going to be a dedicated cable used specifically for Supra. TechStream used almost exclusively for diagnostic purposes only. Where ISTA, on the other hand, not only uses for diagnostic information, communicating with the vehicle in other words, but the majority of the diagnostic information is on ISTA as well. TechStream is a very dynamic diagnostic platform that allows you to be creative with diagnosis by using multiple resources. In other words, we give you data lists, active tests, utilities, and monitor information for you to look at during diagnosis. However, with ISTA, when it comes to the information for diagnosis, it's all part of, of ISTA the wiring diagrams, system descriptions, component locations are all part of the program. So, what's the biggest difference between TechStream and ISTA? ISTA is a lot less dynamic because it uses guided diagnostics. So what do we mean by guided diagnostics? Well, first of all, what ISTA is going to do is it's going to create a diagnostic test plan and it's based on a DTC. When a test plan is calculated for a given DTC, ISTA then gathers all the related system wiring diagrams, or in other words SSPs as they call them, system descriptions or FUBs as they call them, and component locations which they call EOBs, and puts it all into one test plan. Then, ISTA gives you a step-by-step -step process to diagnose the cause of the DTC. We're going to start by hooking up the DCA8000. This is done underneath the hood. Under this red cap is where our positive lead of the DCA8000 goes. And then ground is on the outside of the engine bay, right there by the hood. This is where we're going to hook up for power supply. Okay, let's get the DCA8000 going. So selecting power supply. Now I'm going to use the scan bar gun to go ahead and scan the VIN in the driver's door. Okay, then from there I'm going to manually enter the information for the battery. We're going to use cold cranking amps, and this is an AGM, or absorbed glass mat style battery. Cold cranking amperage happens to be 950 cold cranking amps, and hit next. 
Start the power supply. And we're about to see what the amperage is from the get-go. Okay, we've started now, and we're pulling as much as 67 amps here. It's going to drop quickly, but that's where it starts out. Let's put it in pad mode now. The way we're going to put it in pad mode is by pushing the power button three times in 0.8 seconds. The dash will come on and it will say diagnostic mode. There it is. We're in pad mode. Once we're in pad mode, the vehicle's headlights will be on, all the dash lights will be on, and of course our DCA 8000 will be hooked up properly. While we're on the subject, let's pause for a minute to take a look at battery testing on this vehicle. We are going to utilize the DCA 8000 and hook up the battery tester specifically at the battery. Don't use those posts underneath the hood. So first of all, we're going to take the red lead of the DCA 8000 and hook it to the red post, or positive post. As for the negative lead, however, there is an amperage sensor right next to the post, so we need to hook it up before the sensor. This is so that the system can see any amperage removed. All right, let's get back to ISTA. With it downloaded on my computer, there are three icons that come up. First of all, there's the ISTA icon. Then there is the protocols icon and the logs icon. The one we're going to want to use to open the software is going to be the ISTA icon. After double clicking on it, give it a second to load. Okay, here it is. There's going to be some terms and conditions to go ahead and agree to. Then I'm going to double click on the top of the screen here to full size it. Now, when we're using the software, it's going to go from left to right. Cases, vehicle information, vehicle management, and pl service plan. Uh, we will progress as we go through each of our service plans. Now, in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see that box. There's a swirling mark that will show progress. Also, there's that icon that shows two pages. When we are connected to the vehicle, there will be an arrow between the two. What else? Here also is a settings tab. Default is British English. However, when you download the software, you're going to want to choose American English, so all the verbiage is understandable. Okay, now let's go ahead and start a case. I'm going to first click on cases, make sure it's new. There's also closed and active, but we're going to start a new case, and we're going to select full identification. Always select full identification. Uh, that way we will make sure that everything is accessible. Okay, it's identified. Here's our VIN number. I'm going to select that and then hit Establish Connection. Now I should get an arrow underneath that, that window or icon. There it is. So we are connected to the vehicle. Here it's going to show some vehicle information as it starts to communicate with it. Okay, we have started a case. Notice we're now at vehicle information, moving across the screen. All right, it's going to continue its vehicle test, and this is very similar to a health check. While it reads, let's show you this question mark icon up in the corner. For your reference, this is the ISTA user's guide. If there's ever any questions about how to use ISTA or what functions are there with ISTA, this manual or user guide is where you're going to want to go. Here you can see the table of contents. A lot of information there, but great information. Okay, we're still in the vehicle test.
Okay, there we are. We're at that control unit tree. Now, this is very similar to a health check. Now it's continuing to take a look at all the different ECUs to be able to see if there's any DTCs that are relating. And then we're going to use this button down in the corner to display fault memory. Okay, now this is an actual tree of all the ECUs on the vehicle. Notice that they're green. Green means that the control units are responding. However, if one of these ECUs were yellow, that would show that it's unresponsive. Very similar to a CAN bus check. Okay, now notice that down here in the corner it says present for fault memory. That means that there are DTCs that are present. So when we click on display fault memory, it will go over to vehicle management. Okay, notice we're at vehicle management, troubleshooting, and fault memory. And here are our DTCs. Now, it's not quite done reading all of the ECUs yet. So we'll continue to let that do that. Meanwhile, quite a few DTCs stored in memory. Some of these DTCs will come up every time. Some of them are simply because the memory hasn't been erased in a while as we go through things here in the training center. Okay, once everything is done, this grayed out button for calculate test plan will come up. Okay, here is our final DTC list. And as soon as this is done, you'll see calculate test plan come up as selectable. There it is. Okay, so when starting a case, when I click on that, that calculate test plan, it's going to go to the service plan tab across the top. There it is. So analyzing those DTCs, it's come up with the best way for us to go ahead and diagnose the issues on this vehicle. And it's put in what we refer to as ABLs, or procedures. This is guided diagnostics. We will go into the diagnosis of a DTC in later videos. But this video was about starting a case using ISTA and then closing a case. So let's address that. Okay, so here we are. We're back to our DTCs. Here under Vehicle Management, we can see the DTCs that have already been diagnosed. At this point, I would delete the fault memory. Then after that's complete, I'm going to go back to Cases. And go to Active Test, or Active Case, excuse me. There's my case, and I'm going to just simply hit Close Case. And we're done.